Hey everybody, good morning. Uh, welcome to our uh, Wednesday 10 o'clock business recovery call. Uh, I'm John Gomez. I work with uh, Victoria Compton over at the EDC. Um, and our guest today will be Kyle Dodd from uh, San Juan County Health and Human Services. Um, we'll be talking about all the cool stuff going on in, uh, in health department land. Uh, just a quick PSA uh, this evening at, from 6 to 7 o'clock, we'll have our weekly EDC community forum. Uh, that is, uh, tonight's topic will be seniors, and we'll be doing uh, like sort of an exploratory conversation about um, issues uh, that seniors face in the islands. Um, we'll be talking about both people that are in care uh, situations as well as uh, challenges that independent seniors Face and uh, things we can be doing better to support that. Um, I'm going to give this another minute or so because people tend to join within the first couple minutes. But uh, this is being recorded. Uh, we'll have question and answer after this. Uh, we'll post it online for everybody who can't show up because obviously folks are at work during this time. Um, so if you have any questions, uh, during the uh, Q and A period, um, and you don't want any sensitive information to be out there, just just a disclaimer that you know this is this will be uploaded for um, general benefit later on. Uh, without further ado, Kyle, what's new? Well, thanks, John. Um, welcome, everybody. Uh, I've got a few things uh, that I'll update you all on and then we'll have uh, time for some question and answer because I know that um, that is one of the greatest uh, benefits these days with all the information swirling around is um, to have the opportunity to uh, ask questions. Um, as you all know, uh, our county is currently in phase two. The um, Governor's Stay Home, Stay Healthy proclamation expired on Sunday. Uh, it was replaced on Monday the 1st with the Governor's Safe Start, Stay Healthy plan, um, which rolled a lot of the original provisions over, um, but is mainly focused on uh, reopening. And with that new proclamation, uh, we learned quite a bit more on how counties are going to move through the phases. Uh, initially, it was thought that uh, everybody would move together, um, but we learned uh, finally um, the rumors were true that each county is going to move independently of one another through the different phases. So each county has to spend a minimum of three weeks in the phase that they were currently in. And at the end of those three weeks, uh, they will make application to the Secretary of Health, demonstrate that uh, we meet the state metrics as far as disease activity, uh, testing, isolation, quarantine, um, all those same items that we had to meet for our uh, earlier variance application. And then uh, if approved, we're able to proceed to the next step. So what that looks like for San Juan County is, as I mentioned, uh, we are in phase two. Um, on June 13th, uh, that marks the day that we would have been in phase two for three weeks and is the earliest date that we can consider um, moving to phase three. Um, that process looks a lot like um, the variants. Uh, for those of you that tracked uh, our variance application moving uh, from phase one to phase two, um, the process moving from phase two to phase three will start with a health officer recommendation to the Board of Health. And as I mentioned, uh, we can't consider doing that until we've been in the phase for three weeks. Um, so. Ideally, a health officer would make recommendation to the Board of Health. Uh, the Board of Health would meet and consider that and pass that on to council um, who would uh, make a decision. If they gave us the go ahead, we would um, submit our application to the state um, to move to phase three. That happened um, very rapidly. Uh, I know the lead up uh, took a couple of weeks, but 
uh, the last time around, uh, we got the go ahead on Friday morning. We had the application in Friday afternoon and State Department of Health notified us within 12 hours on Saturday uh, that we were approved uh, for phase two. So no guarantee moving forward um, how quickly that process will work, but that's been our previous experience. So there was talk yesterday at council, some of you may have listened in, others may have not, um, about um, moving to phase three um, as quick as possible. Um, one idea that was thrown out was to see if we could get a Board of Health meeting scheduled uh, on Saturday the 13th um, to consider that. So um, we'll know here uh, within the next few days if uh, we can pull that together, um, but just know that uh, that is the earliest date that we can apply and there's talk about doing it um, uh, on that day uh, if, we, if we can. Other conversations yesterday at council that have been um, ongoing for um, quite some time and um, really ramped up um, on Friday morning um, based on a reopening call that we had and our health officer, Dr. James, um, indicated that he was considering um, relaxing the transient accommodation ban. So right now, um, as all of you are well aware, um, transient accommodations uh, are not allowed in the county um, until we reach phase three. Um, he indicated uh, on Friday that he was considering um, relaxing that health officer order um, and kind of where he landed uh, over the weekend after feedback was uh, he would He's considering allowing a 50% um, occupancy of transient accommodations um, between uh, the signing of the health officer order, which we don't have yet, um, and phase three. So um, he took a lot of comment yesterday uh, at council, uh, in addition to what he heard over the weekend. Um, and is still working on incorporating some of those comments and a final version. Um, but that is, um, that's where it was the last time that I had a conversation with him um, and don't expect uh, too substantive uh, of changes uh, made to that. And so the, the idea is to um, allow, you know, we, we've used this term soft start um, several times as we've moved through these phases and definitely heard from the business community um, when we moved from phase one to phase two and that happened uh, very rapidly like I said overnight within 12 hours and we got that information out and and the feedback was well we, we needed more time um, to be able to prepare and although we, we couldn't control that um, the, the thought is that uh, moving forward, transient accommodations, uh, if the health officer approves this order, would have the ability to um, open at 50% occupancy, allow them to uh, get their staffing where it needs to be, um, gear up on their safety protocols, um, which will be required as part of that as well and um, be able to get back up and running before uh, phase three. Um, so they can um, essentially, uh, essentially test out uh, what, what their uh, new normal operating condition is gonna be. So, so stay Kyle, tuned for the, that. What's Go ahead. the timeline look like for that? Just, just, to, just to summarize, because there's a, there's a number of steps there um, in, First, we have to pass. First, Dr. James has to get past the order for fifty percent, and then we're giving. And then hopefully, the they have a couple of weeks before we get into phase three. But phase three will apply for as early as June thirteenth. Is that right? That's correct. Yep. 
So um, we, we won't know the actual uh, date on the health officer order till he signs it. But again, what he's talked about is making it effective the day he signs it. So um, he's incorporating comments that could happen within the next couple days. So it would be um, between that point in time to June 13th. Um, and again, all this is predicated upon um, what we anticipate happening. Um, if we can get a Board of Health meeting uh, scheduled for the 13th and that is favorable um, and we have the ability to uh, have our variance application um, together like we did last time. Uh, once we get approval, we'll get that in as soon as possible. So, so the, the earliest uh, that things could possibly happen as far as health officer order would be um, anytime between right now and the next few days. Earliest time frame for phase, phase three um, would be if Board of Health happens on the 13th um, and we get our variants in, it could happen uh, in a matter of days after that. So again, a lot of this has been uh, crystal balling to some, to some degree and trying to um, look at uh, how things are, are, are going to be uh, shaping up in the future, but just working off of uh, our previous experience with getting Board of Health approval and submittal, um, that's the best answer I have for you. Cool, thank you. Yeah, so um, phase three was kind of the, uh, the last thing on my short list here that I wanted to um, talk about and we've we've covered kind of the process um, how uh, at least from my chair and looking out my windshield how I see that uh, potentially moving forward uh, and once we're in phase three um, then all non-essential travel uh, is resumed and again that's when we have envisioned uh, at least for the transient accommodations folks, which are the um, the the individuals that uh, we've been hearing from recently, they would be uh, open at 100% uh, um, once we hit phase three. So I know there's a lot of information there, um, but I wanted to hit the high points of where we are, the discussions that are going on right now regarding transient accommodations and uh, potential 50% opening between now and phase three, and then what, what happens once we get to phase three. Other notable um, openings in phase three uh, are uh, recreational facilities at less than 50% capacity. Um, so I know that uh, I've gotten calls from uh, local, uh, local gyms and they're eager to to get going as well if they're not already up and running in phase two under the limited uh, personal training um, activities that are allowed um, then they'll be able to open at 50 percent uh, under phase three certainly um, phase three would allow gatherings uh, of up to 50 people it uh, allows restaurants to increase capacity uh, up to 75% with a table size uh, no larger than 10, um, moves through to um, bar areas and restaurants can be open at less than 25% capacity, movie theaters less than 50% capacity, um, libraries, museums, um, and I think those are the uh, those are the applicable ones um, that I'm just kind of looking at as I look at that uh, phase three reopening chart. So I think with that, um, I'll stop there and certainly open to to answering any questions. Uh, and we'll go where you guys want to take it from here. Sure. Did you want to talk about masks today, or? Um... Thank you. Yes. So I had, I had that note next to um, the governor's proclamation uh, signed on 6-1. So um, 
You'll all be familiar with a health officer order requiring face coverings uh, in businesses. Um, the governor's order uh, also reinforced that. Uh, his proclamation on 6-1 uh, required all employees in businesses to have a face covering starting June 8th. Um, so something that's been in the works from the county's perspective is uh, an effort to um, support businesses um, with a, an initial supply of face coverings. Um, the idea would be uh, visitors that, uh, that, that are showing up that, that don't have one or uh, a local who shows up that just forgot theirs. Uh, we, as, as, I, as I walk around town and go in businesses, I think um, a lot of our locals are fairly well dialed in and, and have obtained them. Um, but this effort um, that, that we're gonna do to supply them uh, is, is to ensure that, uh, again, businesses have a, have a supply on hand uh, initially for those that show up without one. Um, we are, we've, we've done kind of an a, a abbreviated uh, walk around town last week with signage. Um, we're gonna continue uh, that walk around town uh, today with some additional signage and some uh, face masks. Um, we're also going to be distributing uh, face masks to the Chambers of Commerce. Um, and also, uh, John, I think we have uh, a bit allocated to the EDC as well, if you guys want to be a point, uh, point uh, place for businesses to obtain those. Um, that distribution plan uh, is, is being worked out by Brendan Cowan, our PIO. Um, but that's that's what we have in store there. So uh, stay tuned. Uh, there'll be some resources um, for an initial supply of, of face coverings shortly. Great. Thanks. Thanks for that. Yeah, we'd uh, yeah we'd certainly like to work with um, with you guys on you know figuring distribution and you know whatever we can do to coordinate that. Okay. Uh, why don't we, it's a small enough group, why don't we go ahead and uh, open it up to, we usually call this Q&A, but maybe it's just more discussion. Um, everybody is uh, able to unmute themselves. So anybody that wants to jump in and ask Kyle or me a question, um, please feel free. No, oh, Krista's got her hand up. Krista? Hey, hey Krista. Hi, um, I have a question or uh, something to consider. It keeps coming up um, over here and we're, I'm working with the Lopez Recovery Network, which is a group of different organizations over here. But one of the issues that we're kind of grappling with now is wondering if there is any possibility of getting something developed, some kind of a brief, concise educational tool uh, probably a video or something, but something that, that employers and employees can use that will help them um, prepare for possible interpersonal challenges as people come into their businesses. You know, we're starting to see some kind of uncomfortable situations, not many, but enough that, you know, no one's really quite prepared for that. And I'm just, so we're knocking around the idea of trying to see if we can how we could get something developed that um, employers and businesses could use to help uh, give some information to their employees on how to respond in those situations. Does anybody know anything about any possibility of something like that? I mean, it's gotta be happening across the nation with places that are requiring masks. Yeah, Krista, I'll, I'll jump in first. I know that, um, Brendan has done a lot of work with uh, folks in the community on his community conversations that he videos and, and puts on uh, YouTube. And I think this would be a perfect, um, perfect topic for that is maybe do a, uh, a short video and then um, maybe uh, acting out a, a scenario um, that, that could provide guidance for uh, businesses to, to show their employees. I think it's a great idea. 
Okay. I may have a name on that. I'm, there's a, an informational poster that Marsha, it was circulated at the network uh, meeting Monday and Marsha de Chardonnay's at BLM, I think has that image. Um, but whoever created that has got some thoughts, has put some thoughts to maybe to this topic. And I don't know where she's even located to find out whether or not that person might be willing to do it. But I'm investigating that and I will let you know. I forgot about that community conversation. That, that, that could be a really good idea. Yeah, and we actually have a, we have a speaker lined up maybe next week for um, Chat and Chew that is, is I, I think this is, I think this is basically gonna be the topic on that one. We're still uh, noodling it out based on her expertise, but it's, you know, it's sort of a combination of understanding people and, um, and de-stressing, but with a kind of looking at a focus on, for lack of a better word, de-escalation uh, techniques that we can you know, share with owners and their employees. Um, but yeah, this, it's definitely longer than a you know forty-five minute talk. But it's a, it, the the idea is there to uh, start exploring this uh, a little bit more robustly. Hmm. Okay. Well, I will stay in touch with you guys and see what we can find out. Sure. Yeah. And sorry, you said it was a poster or it was some, somebody who created a. Um, this is a, no, it is a, it's a poster. It's like a 11 by 17 or larger. Uh, mm -hmm. And it has just a bunch, a variety of COVID related information. It's quite oh. appealing and nice. And we're thinking about if we can get permission to blow it up into something that can be out in the elements. We've developed some images for over here that we're going to put out and we sure. may include one, that one, but once I get a hold of that image, I'm happy to circulate it. I think it's free to circulate. Oh, yeah. Please. Yeah, we'd love to see it. Yeah. Or obviously, anything that helps with messaging at this point is in a friendly, non-threatening manner is, you know, always, it's going to be a plus for the next few months. So. Uh, okay. You know, and there was a guy, there was a gentleman on one of the calls um, we were all on a few days ago, and he was a psychology PhD. He was talking about, this is all kind of a, you know, I, I think some of you may have been on this one, and there have been so many of these things, it's, uh, I have to dig back through my notes, but uh, do any of you remember that gentleman? No, oh, well, I'll look, I'll try to find it in my notes. I think he was going to propose something um, to that group, so. Uh, okay, anybody else? Hey, I've got a, I've got, this is Becky from, hey, Becky. Uh, hi, I've got a question, um, a math question for Kyle. Um, so in a restaurant, if the cook is working by himself and the owner is out front and you're not open for business, do you have to be wearing a mask? So this is a this is a scenario where there's prep going on and mm -hmm. no, nobody else is in the establishment. Yeah, just the one cook by himself and then the owner out front doing her thing. Well, it, 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 this is one of those gray areas. I, I would yeah. default to I would default to yes on that. Um, so the the specific language is. Um, face coverings required except in situations where uh, employees uh, do not have any other interaction um, with with either the public or coworkers. So um, okay. that's that's kind of my default if there's if there's no way that the two would interact and uh, he <clears throat> he takes his face covering off for a bit um, uh, you know it, it, I, I think that's reasonable. Or if they come out to talk to each other, then they put their masks on or something like that. Sure. Yeah, sure. It, it was just one of those weird situations like, uh, you're by yourself, should you be wearing a mask? And yep. so, okay. Yep. That's all I know, Kyle. Thank and you. it's, um, and again, the reason for uh, the, the face coverings is to um, contain uh, any any potential uh, viral particles if somebody is asymptomatic right. um, so it's uh, it, it's not a 
personal protective equipment per se, um, but it's more of a containment um, device. Right. Okay. Thank you. Hey, Kyle, just, you know, we were, you know, before the call, we were talking about testing, uh, testing on the island and, you know, it, sort of where we are in relation to the rest of the rest of the state and the rest, you know, the rest of the country. Um, do you, at some point, you know, employers are going to want to be testing their employees. And I don't know, without look, looking through the guidance, you know, like, would, you know, would line cooks be required to be tested down the road here um, in phase two or phase, I mean, obviously we haven't seen phase three guidance, but, you know, who who should be considering getting testing as we're in phase two and moving to phase three? Are we still just looking at frontline workers or should we be thinking about, you know, expanding that? Yeah, so obviously when I, when I touched on phase three uh, and what that looks like, we haven't seen any um, industry specific guidance or we, we don't know if any of those uh, that are already out for say food services or recreation activities, it's tough to say whether or not those will be amended uh, in phase three to uh, include testing, but um, we, as the county's emergency response team, um, have talked about doing uh, what we're terming uh, sentinel testing. Um, so right now, obviously anybody who is showing symptoms of COVID can go to their primary care provider and uh, be tested. The capacity uh, currently doesn't exist um, everywhere in the state for anybody who wakes up one day and says, uh, I want to go get tested. Um, so we, we have put together a draft sentinel testing plan where we're going to be working with um, businesses across the county, um, approaching them to uh, be able to collect some of this data on an ongoing basis and partner with them um, they will be, uh, they will all be essential workers as those that are, uh, have the highest exposure to um, people that are, are potentially ill, um, both uh, in, our, in our county and in the course of their daily jobs, um, or as we open move towards phase three, uh, people traveling from other counties and interacting with them. Um, so we, we'll be working with uh, businesses uh, initially to identify um, who, who we want to test and, and we're, we're hoping that we can get some sort of partnership with them um, where we supply uh, staffing and resources and the test kits uh, and they're able to help us out with uh, funding some of the lab fees. So that's yeah. kind of the 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 draft plan that we have uh, so far penciled out. Okay, do you, are you familiar with the the you, just remembering this from a few weeks ago that UW had um, some sort of mobile testing going on over on Lopez for a little while? I don't, and that may have been a pilot program or something else. Yeah, I'm I'm not aware of anything specific. Uh, I know that there's been a lot of talk about mobile. Um, uh, Abbott testing machines that are antibody testing. Was it was it that or was it an actual um, specimen I, antigen I antigen collection? I don't. I never really got any specifics on it. I was talking to a business owner over there who was having who was going to have his employees tested. Um, okay. So this was something that was available beyond first. You know, well, his business may have been considered a first a first line. So okay, well there, there there was that project um, several weeks ago that uh, the county put on. Uh, we tested over 300 uh, asymptomatic essential workers, and uh, the business owner may have uh, been able to take part in that. Gotcha. Okay. So that was a that was a one time. Um, to gather data on, hey, are we seeing uh, people that are testing positive that aren't showing symptoms in our essential workers who are at the highest risk? And we tested over 300 people 
and did not get any positives. So this effort that I'm talking about would just expand on that and make it more of a um, ongoing effort instead of a, a one-time event. Okay, got it, thanks. Well, uh, we had a late, late caller um, join in on a mobile phone. Um, if you're unmuted uh, on my end, so if you want to unmute on your end, um, if you have any questions, uh, this is this is this is that point in time. If nobody has any qu more questions or anything else they want to discuss. We can uh, we can wrap this up early. I know we've all been on a lot of these the last couple of months now, so we don't want to drag it out more than we have to. Hopefully, quiet out there. Okay, Kylie, you have any you have any parting thoughts? Uh, as we get ready to gear up for what could be a, another exciting transition in the next few days? Um, the only thing I'll say is uh, what, what I, I've said over and over is I, I appreciate everybody's um, patience and um, compassion. Uh, we, we, we definitely hear a lot of uh, concerns from the community. Um, this last round around opening up transient accommodations um, we got we got feedback on both sides of that, um, and uh, we're certainly doing everything we can to uh, protect the public health, um, as well as acknowledging um, where our where our business community is and where we're meeting those metrics, um, moving forward as expeditious as possible. So, um, thanks for everybody. Uh, hanging in there and um, we're, we're hoping we can keep stepping through these phases uh, as soon as possible. If there's any, um, any questions that, that come up after the call, um, John has my email address and a lot of you on the call have that as well. If I can clarify anything, um, just send an email. Thanks. Thanks, Carl. Thanks, guys. Uh, just a reminder, uh, tonight at six o'clock, uh, on our, uh, we'll have our regular programming for the EDC forum, which we'll be talking about seniors, senior issues in the islands, um, the challenges they face both, you know, before and during COVID. So, um, you know, I invite you all to join. Uh, it's open to everybody in the county. So, and we've, uh, you know, tried to blast that out as much as possible. Uh, so we'll wrap this up early. Thank you guys so much for coming and uh, we'll see you next week.